everybody. I'm Rima Zainal Kuzulgun. I'm Asian Gymnastic Union Women Technical Committee President. Dear AGU, uh, Asian Gymnastic Union family and friends, welcome today to our fifth and last session for this set of seminars, which is dedicated for questions and answers. Firstly, let me thank you very much for your interest, uh, lovely comments and uh, positive uh, feedbacks regarding our previous sessions in the last weeks about the un uh, vaulting table, uneven bars, balance beam and floor exercise. And since uh, today we don't have many questions, I assume it's due to the fact that the previous sessions were clear and understandable enough. Now back to our uh, sessions for today. Uh, let me introduce you to our FIG expert, our FIG Women Technical Committee President, Mrs. Donatella Saki. She is well known with her positivity and generosity in supporting and helping everybody. So please let me welcome her. Welcome, dear Donatella, to our session today. Thank you, Rima. First of all, I would like uh, to thank you for this uh, invitation. It's a, a big honor and a pleasure for me to be part of, of your uh, seminars. As you know, I'm uh, very close to the Asian Union, to you, and uh, I would like uh, to help uh, you and your technical committee in the, the preparation of the judges for the next uh, judges courses to increase the level, not only in the category, but uh, in the knowledge for the future. Thank you very much. We are really happy and proud to have you with us. It's a big privilege and uh, I'm sure it will be very useful. And uh, let me thank you personally for your support, continuous support in our previous sessions for this seminar. As you said, you are very close to us and always ready to help, there is no doubt. And also I would like to thank your team, your committee and also FIG authority for supporting uh, running this uh, seminar and make it come through. So we are really happy and lucky. You know that any time you need, you can refer to the Women Technical Committee, any member, because uh, we are ready to help. I'm sure, as usual, I'm sure. Thank you very much. So if we are uh, done with the, uh, this uh, nice introduction, uh, let me kindly uh, move to our uh, main topic of today, which is the questions and answers. And uh, let me share my screen with you so we can start with our first question. So as uh, we promised today to have the answers from our uh, expert donor, we can move to our first uh, question, which is about the competitions in general in this hard time of the pandemic. So the question is, does the FIG or AGU, considering the possibility of holding competitions online, is it certainly, uh, it is certainly difficult, but in the current situation, we probably need to think about it. So this was the question, dear Donna. Okay, so FIG at the moment, is not taking into consideration to organize online competitions for artistic gymnastics. I know FIG did something with parkour, but as you can imagine, artistic gymnastics is uh, uh, more complicated uh, in judging. And uh, also, it depends uh, which kind of competition we organize. I think for a friendly competition, with agreement of the parts of the federation, maybe it's possible. But to have an FIG registered competition online, I think we need to assure kind of uh, legal running of the competition because we know that uh, also internet could be a problem in some uh, country. So it's not possible for everybody to follow the FIG requirements. Exactly. I believe so also in, from my part as AGU. Internet can be a big uh, handicap, as you said, and other uh, factors like the judges' uh, positions and uh, uh, the, the places they are, that they are there. 
So, yeah, I, I agree with you, not for the moment, maybe in the more technologic future. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Can we move to our next question, please? Okay. We have a question on balance beam. Uh, first question is regarding the squat stand turns, as we can see in the screen here, regarding the squat stand and full turn or one and a half or double or three. And the turn in tuck stand on one uh, leg, three leg optional. In the middle of the, this turn, lose the balance and stand up. How do you recognize the difficulty? Also, where is the boundary between squatting and standing up? Please let me first share the video with you, just to make it more clear. Yes, please. So it's a very interesting uh, question with this uh, turn uh, in a tax stand, actually. On beam, uh, there are no requirements uh, for the free leg to be stretched at the moment, mm -hmm. but uh, is a WTC opinion that uh, with this kind of execution, the turn will be considering a C. Why? Because uh, until one and a half turn, she is in the tax stand. So which means where is the borderline? Uh, we analyze many of these uh, terms. And at the end, we arrive uh, to the decision that uh, the knee angle should be less than 90 degrees. So it means that if you take the knee line, which is uh, parallel to the beam, the hips can be slightly above the knee line, but not going to stand. So when she's going to complete the double pirouette, she's already on the way to stand more than 90 degrees knee angle. Mm -hmm. And for this decision, for this um, problem, we decided to recognize only the one and a half C. Mm -hmm. About the lack of balance in the middle of the turn, this is a problem included, is a fault included in the body shape deductions because the lack of balance is a landing, as you know, deduction. So mm -hmm. we are not in the landing, we are in the middle of the element. So belongs to not a clear position of the turn according to the requirements for any pirouette. According to the knowledge we have of gymnastic, the mm -hmm. position of the turn. Okay, I think it's quite clear and logic. Thank you very much, Donna. We can move to the other question in the on balance beam again. Uh, it's about the leaps and jumps. How can we tell if leap or jump lack the height? Is it relative to the height of the gymnast? Yes, of course. Is uh, according to the size of the gymnast. So we have to consider how much she lifts the center of gra gravity. So mm -hmm. the bottom, the hips, to explain uh, in an easy way. Very good, very good. Yes, it's, it's logic. Thank you very much. We can move to the other question. Uh, we have on floor exercise, first question, again, regarding the turns uh, with the free leg on horizontal as it's uh, seen here on the screen. So turn with the, with the heel of the free leg forward at horizontal throughout the turn. Also with the free leg held, here they meant to say or support, and the free leg can be straight or bent. How we can differ between support and hold? What is the recognition for holding? Also, I tried to add uh, some similar video situation. Let me share it with you first.
Yes, please. Okay, you choose a good execution. So this is uh, nice. So first, uh, the difference between uh, support and hold. The difference is the leg. So if we speak about uh, free leg held, means uh, that the gymnast hold mm -hmm. with one hand the free leg. This is holding. Mm -hmm. About support, the support is the leg, the foot on the floor. So the one around which we make the turn. Mm -hmm. This is the difference. It's not referring to the same leg. So mm -hmm. one is up, is the free, and this is free or held. The other one is in support, is the one going to the floor. And this one is the one keeping the body in touch with the floor. So both legs can be uh, straight or bent. So about the support leg, normally is straight, but could be also slightly bent, which is not relaxed. Because if you notice the support leg relax, this is a deduction and belongs to the body shape. But if it's a clear, defined position during the turn, this could be a different uh, um, artistic presentation of the pirouettes. About the leg held, we said only with one hand because we saw videos with the straight leg held with both hands or could be the bent leg with both hands. But this can create a confusion with the pirouette with the leg held in split. So the judges can mix up the turn with the leg held in split as a bad execution going to the element with straight leg held with both hands. So can be missing split, uh, recognition of the turn. And actually, is not from the aesthetic point of view very nice. How can be the bent leg? The bent leg with one hand has the same requirements as the straight leg, holding or not holding, the heel of the free leg must be at horizontal throughout the turn for recognition, or you go to recognize another element from the code of points. Mm -hmm. That's very nice uh, explanation, dear Donna. Thank you. You define uh, and show the difference between support and hold. But I just have a small uh, concern. In the second part of the question, they say, uh, what's the difference between support and hold? When they ask this, I, I, I understand about the free held legs. They try to understand if the gymnast clever or tricky enough while showing little holding, but actually it's supporting or uh, raising up the legs. Maybe I misunderstood the second part of the question. I don't no, know. I understood the same as you. For this yeah? reason, I said support refers only to, to the, the mm -hmm. going to the floor. Yeah. And hold slightly a Put lot, whatever, is doesn't about matter. the free leg. Doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. oh, but okay. support is the leg supporting the body. Yeah. It's not exactly. the hand supporting the free leg. That's why one is support, one is hold. So maybe yeah. they confused between the definition when they talk about the free leg between support and hold. But I think it's very clear now. Yeah, I understand because uh, English sometimes is not uh, easy. 
especially the code of points sometimes uh, is not in basic English, so it's not easy to understand, but it's very good that uh, they ask, this is very important. There are no stupid questions. Always ask because we'll add something to your knowledge. And definitely you put it very simply and clear. Thank you, Donna, really, yeah. Okay, so if you are fine, can we move to the other question? Yeah. Okay. Oh. Another question on the floor about the music. If the gymnast cannot hear the music, can she repeat the routine? The music hasn't stopped, but she didn't hear the start. What we do in this case? Uh, so first of all, the decision belongs uh, to the superior jury. So the coach can uh, go and make a request to the superior jury. Then uh, it's up to the superior jury to decide if she can repeat the exercise or not. But in the help desk is very clear as in the code of points, as clarification to the code of points, when it's a, a system failure, so it means that uh, there is a, a lightning failure, electricity problem, or is because the gymnast fault. Maybe she didn't hear the music because uh, the recording system didn't work or maybe it was uh, her mistake because uh, she was not concentrated uh, enough. So she can uh, repeat only if something happened not concerning her fault, but concerning a technical problem. So to put it shortly, if she really faced problem or difficulty to hear clearly, better to stop and to object or her coach can refer to the superior jury yes. to ask for a petition. Yes. Okay, more clear now. Thank you very much. Well, moving to another question about vaulting table. We have one question mm -hmm. and uh, it's talk about the first group, which is hand springs without saltos. And uh, if the gymnast executed the vault very poorly, shall we consider this vault as invalid zero volt because the vault is too poor to be recognized. Let's see the video. I have a small simple video and then we can talk. Yes. Okay, the execution is uh, very poor, but you can recognize the vault. You can say it was a handspring. Yeah. With a lot of uh, execution mistakes, but you can say, yes, it was a handspring. So you can recognize it and apply all the deductions according to the code of points. So the beginning, first flight, the hip angle, bent legs, legs apart. Mm -hmm. Then if you want feet not pointed, because it's slow, so you can see feet not pointed. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a bent arms in repulsion, and then you have a shoulder angle and then... yeah, full deduction for height, again, bent knees, legs apart, distance, dynamics, and uh, all the landing, which is in this case, she has no steps, but at least legs apart uh, on landing. Yeah. Just remember that deviation from the straight direction is not a landing deduction. So in case you can deduct also for the, the direction. deviation. Yeah. yeah, yeah, clear. Yeah, yeah. For 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 me also, it's recognized as at least still from group one. So it's quite clear answer. Thank you very much. We move to the other question about uneven bars. Most questions we have today about uneven bars. Our My favorite. favorite apparatus. Yeah, exactly. So the question is about the cast and the clear hip circle to handstand. Performing these elements near to the vertical, we uh, will we will you call cast to handstand B and the clear hip circle to handstand is C or not? I have small video, short video. Also, let me. 
Yes, please. Allora. Allora. <laughs> uh, I share this video with the technical committee and uh, everybody had uh, the same opinion. So we would give the cast uh, B because uh, we consider within 10 degrees, but uh, the clear hip circle is not a C element. So we will recognize with as a B with, uh, of course, angle and other execution deductions. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay, thank you. When, especially when it's in the normal speed, not mm -hmm. slow, it's really hard to decide because of the angles. So it's clear, yeah. Yeah, but the cast is very close to the handstand, yes. very, yes. very close. So we can say within the tolerated uh, the angle of 10 yes. degrees. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. And when there is, uh, we are in doubt, as usually uh, we used to know, so we go for the benefit of the gymnast in case yes. we are not yes. so sure. Yes, exactly. Okay. Okay. Shall we move to the other question? Number two on the bar regarding the pack salto. What are the conditions for the skill to be awarded a D if it's performed with a fall. For example, pack, but it almost looked like a fly away layout with almost just touching the bar, legs drop right away. Should they show, they mean the gymnast, some sort of support on the low bar for the skill to be awarded? In these situations, the video uh, helps a lot. Yeah. Because uh, to explain uh, what is uh, momentary support, uh, this is theory, but then uh, it's more important to see in practice. Mm -hmm. Let's say that uh, even it's a fly away, the pack, and you will deduct for the height, if usually the gymnast grasp the bar with both hands, and uh, you can see this momentary grasp and then the feet hit the mat or she has a fall touching the mat. In this case, usually we go uh, in the favor of the gymnast with all the deductions. As I said, theoretically it's very easy. Then mm -hmm. we need to see in practice how much she is really grasping before the feet go on the mat, mm -hmm. or if it's just a open hand, even not grasping, just mm -hmm. touch like this. Mm -hmm. I cannot say theory is theory, but yeah. uh, you need uh, your uh, gymnastic knowledge Example. to help mm -hmm. at the moment uh, you see this execution. Mm -hmm. So we can say for now, uh, as theory answer, she has to show a, at least a momentary front support or grasping momentary the low bar. Momentary grasp, yes. Yes, before the legs fall onto the mat. Yes. Okay. Okay, clear. Thank you. We as move theory. To the, uh, yeah. We move to the other question on bar number three. Oh, for the clear hip circle to handstand, that is the evaluate because it doesn't reach handstand. What is the angle of the legs for us to still consider it as a B and not as a back hip circle, which is an A? Should the legs at least go up to 45 degrees and hips not touching bar for it to be a, a B element? Or is it enough for the hips not to touch the bar even if the legs just going around the bar and don't, uh, don't even go up. So they ask if it's not C and B, for how long we consider it B before it goes into the <laughs> A <laughs> category. Another yeah. very interesting question. And uh, again, I cannot say, uh, theoretically, there, is, there are no degrees. There is mm -hmm. no angle to mm. say this is a B. Even mm. uh, if 
she's just going around the bar below horizontal. This is considered a B mm. with a big deduction because it's mm. only five for angle. Mm. And then you have the other execution deductions. So if she's going around the bar, touching the bar, this uh, I would consider an A. But there are no angles uh, helping to say is a B or is an A. Is uh, the technique she is using to go around the bar. Yes, very nice. Okay, at least you put it clear again. Thank you. So as long as the hip, I try to make it simple for the mm -hmm. judges to understand, forgive me. As long as she don't touch the hip to the bar, we can still consider it like a free hip circle regardless the uh, uh, required angle, which is better 45 degree minimum. But as you said, with a large uh, deduction for the angle of completion of element. And the moment if she touched the bar, then we consider it A, like back hip circle. Yeah, right? the moment she's going around the bar touching, mm -hmm. this is an A. Okay, okay, clear. Thank you very much. Moving to the other question. Number four on the bar, what is the conditions of a full pirouette to be given the value when it falls on the opposite direction, opposite side? Mm -hmm. I think we have uh, some videos uh, in the help desk about it. But uh, anyway, I can understand that, that is uh, always a problem. So the decision to help judges is that if the gymnast can perform the full turn, which means that she regrasp with both hands before falling, we will recognize as uh, Tohontov, we call, I don't know how you can explain mm -hmm. to the judges, mm -hmm. with full turn, if in handstand and then fall as uh, the D element. If no handstand, but she can regrasp and then fall, this becomes a devaluation to C and considered the swing element. Very good, okay. So if it's in the, on the handstand, then D and fall. If it's out of the 10 degree tolerate, tolerance, then it's the evaluate and fall. And if yeah. it's only, half, then we consider it swing with a half turn, right? I have only a question here. Uh, what means on the opposite side? Because uh, she's going around, around the bar. So yes. is this the opposite side or is going up and from the side she's going up, coming down? So I assume... Mm -hmm. mm. This was I assume I assume I understand uh, the opposite of the direction that she came from. So let's say if she rotate this way, mm. she pull the opposite direction, as you explained. So kind of swing. We are yeah. in the swing yeah. part. Yes. So going up here and going down exactly here from the yeah. same. Okay. So yeah. my interpretation was this, but uh, not sure. Sometimes better always to see. Sure. Yeah. Better always to uh, see no, the example better life. To, no, better to understand what they mean. Yeah. So yeah. if opposite is going up and down, same side. Mm -hmm. So this uh, could be D and D then fall, fall if touching the handstand. Mm -hmm. Or if not touching, coming up, turn, re-grasp even out of mm -hmm. the hand. And, but re-grasp and fall, this is a devaluation mm -hmm. to see yes. as a speed. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, great. I guess it's clear. Okay, moving to the other question, number five on bar. If gymnast stops her routine, for example, while on the high bar and before making a new cast to handstand to resume the routine, she lifts her other hand from the bar can be visible, they insist to explain this, 
not both hands when it's a fall. So they, may, they meant to say if she didn't move both hands, but only one hand. What is the deduction if the gymnast lifts only one hand? Very interesting questions. Again, uh, in our uh, presentations to the judges during the World Championships, mm -hmm. we mention clear both hands. Because uh, all the videos, all uh, examples we could see during the competitions was about the both hands. So now we are in a new situation. We didn't consider because I was not touching uh, our uh, brain. We never saw this kind of a uh, situation. In this case, you have to follow the logic of this uh, fall on the apparatus one point. The logic is that we consider this uh, stop like a big break in the routine because she stop on the bar. She's not just adjusting the hand, the hand guard. I don't know how you can explain, but grip. I understand. Grip, yeah, the hand, uh, the hand grip. grips, a hand guard, uh, the name. Mm -hmm. Okay, this mm -hmm. you are not just adjusting which is uh, fine. So if even you take one hand, what you do? You can uh, scratch. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. This is still a big breath. <laughs> it's not uh, short. Yeah. Even it's only one hand. You say, hi, mom. It's only one hand. But it's a big breath in the routine. I'm joking. Sorry, Rima. Sometimes <laughs> To, it's fine. It's, it's to okay. have the attention of the judges. So in this case, uh, it's still a big break. Mm -hmm. And we may add for uh, the next instructions uh, to the judges that doesn't matter if it's one or both. But the mm -hmm. logic of this deduction is the big break in the rhythm of the routines. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, they just stop adjust and restart quite quick. But we cannot say anything about timing. It's very complicated. How many mm -hmm. seconds? One second, two seconds, five seconds. Uh, timing is very difficult to quantify. Mm -hmm. It's already a problem in the beam connection. So don't break the head uh, on mm -hmm. bars with this kind of timing. So this, the logic may help, but again, the video will help a lot if we have a video to decide uh, if it's a really a big break or just adjusting one hand. Mm -hmm. But it's really visible, it's, it means it's a big stop. Yeah. But video so, will help. Yeah, yeah. So again, to put it shortly, allow me to say, just to summarize your uh, valuable explanation. Uh, if it's a clear stop, like stopping the fluency of the routine, uh, then it can be a kind of fall. But if it's stop with just a little adjustment or raising one hand but grasping again quickly, we can still consider it as an intermediate swing and she continue? If it's not visible, it's just adjusting, yes. But if you can really, as written here, visible scene, take out and put mm -hmm. again, maybe changing yeah. the, uh, the and, grip. Uh, mm -hmm. So in this case, for me, is a big break. Okay. So it might be a, as a fall, as one uh, point. Yes. Okay. Shall we move to the other question, mm -hmm. please? Okay. Number six on the bar about Weiler Keep. If it doesn't pass through the vertical and does not show support, for example, shoulder of at least 45 degree from vertical. Shall we still consider it as a, an A element and can, can still fulfill their re composition requirement number four of the different grips? Mm, yes, because in the code, we have uh, this uh, hip circle forward, which is an A element. Mm -hmm. And any element uh, from uh, the code, regardless uh, the value, 
can fulfill mm -hmm. the composition requirement. In this case, a different grip. Mm -hmm. So in the case of Weiler, should be closed legs as also indicated in the judge help desk to receive um, D. In yeah. case goes up to the handstand with open legs, then it's C. And Evaluation. in case, uh -huh, and in case uh, turning, not reaching the vertical and not minimum to 45 degree as well. So we still consider it like an A element and can fulfill the requirement. Yes. And this was a video from the last, uh, at least, intercontinental judges course exam. Mm -hmm. And many did wrong. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. OK. Very so, good to re remind and uh, yes. underline. I don't yeah. know next exam if we will have uh, one of these videos. <laughs> but in case, don't forget, because mm -hmm. we learn from mistakes. Exactly. A lot. Exactly. Okay, great. It's clear now. And we move to this question number seven. Again, we have Pax Alto. Uh, continue with directly to the hip circle backward. If perform Pax Alto and directly to back hip circle, what is the evaluation? I think it's also a video in the help desk. Mm -hmm. Anyway, the pack salto is a D because uh, with deduction, height, uh, execution deduction, because mm -hmm. she grasps the bar and then the hip circle is an element. So mm -hmm. from a D, she goes to an A element. And then uh, you apply just execution deductions. Pay just attention that after the hip circle, Maybe there is an empty swing deduction 0.5. It depends how she continues after the hip circle. Uh, is it empty swing or intermediate swing due to the pump swing? Empty after swing. The circle. Because oh. circle finish. Okay. Can you mm -hmm. see my hands? Yes, yes. So finish swing forward, nothing. Mm -hmm. And then here she's going to a cast, let's say. Handstand, yes. no handstand, but at least going to a cast. And so then this rotate. is one side swing, it's not two side swing. Could be intermediate, it depends. Okay. Just yeah. one, two, three, whatever, could be intermediate. But normally, circle, close, and cast. This is an empty. Anyway, Ex it's 0.5. Exactly, yes, yes. But it's good to uh, give the correct definition. Thank you very much. So, pack salto directly mm -hmm. to hip circle and mm -hmm. then continue something else. So, it's, uh, it's more uh, to, uh, close to be empty swing because only one direction, as you uh, mentioned. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Just try to take my notes as well in the same time. Okay, we move to the other question, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, no more questions about the bar. We have one question about the falls in general. Should we still deduct for landing, like they meant body posture, or steps, etc., before the fall? Actually, steps. Uh, it can, yeah, it can occur before the falls. Yeah. So, yeah. In this so, case, in this case, no. You will deduct uh, for the height for execution deductions in the mm -hmm. hair. In the but air, then yes. in the air before mm -hmm. landing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But then uh, if you have a fall, the fall cover all landing deductions. Mm. So steps fall is only the fall. Mm -hmm. So you have to go back and look which are the deduction including included in landing. That's it. As I said before, on vault deviation from the direction is not uh, landing, is something before. So go back there and look what is included in landing deduction and uh, what is not. Yeah, so in this case, let's say we, if we talk about double salto tack on the floor, we can deduct for the insufficient tack position, we can deduct for feet not pointed, 
we can deduct about the height, yeah. but the moment uh, the legs touch the floor, let's say she took some steps for um, under rotation or whatever, and then she fell, only one point for fall. Yes, so no just to make posture, no posture, because... no body posture also uh -huh. in the landing. Okay, that's the, I think that was the border. They they wanted to underline the body posture more because steps is obvious when she takes steps and then fall only fall, but so it means also no body posture fall. No, only the fall. Okay. Because uh, you see the question is landing posture. Yeah. Is landing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's why you say always remind us to refer to the landing uh, faults and try to differentiate between the errors definition. Yes. Okay, great, clear. And we have here actually, uh, dear Donna, last minute question. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I tried to add it to our questions in the last moment, but um, and it's not uh, directly about some techniques, it's regarding the technical regulations about the DNS and DNF, did not start or did not finish. And uh, the question says, if in team finals, there are two gymnasts or more injured, which is really uh, extreme uh, situation, yes. <laughs> extraordinary, maybe there are not enough gymnasts for every apparatus competition, how to recognize the team result? Uh, do you wish me to say the other section of the uh, question or we go uh, one, one by, by one? One. <laughs> one by one, okay. <laughs> because okay. Uh, this is a very complicated uh, question. Yeah, and, definitely. Uh, yeah. Um, we have to refer to technical regulation, yes, but uh, also there is something helping in the appendix to the code of points even at the moment refers only to acro, aerobic, and uh, trampoline. Anyway, mm -hmm. can be a guide guideline uh, in general as examples. Yeah. So in the team final, actually in the team, even a gymnast uh, is uh, injured and uh, her score is not counting because uh, she has a DNS, did not start. Mm -hmm. At the end, the team result is a result. So the team will not receive DNF. The team will receive the total score. Mm. Okay? So okay. one, two, three, four gymnasts, poor team. Uh, <laughs> I'm very sorry for them. But at the end, even in one apparatus, they will have only one score, and maybe if it's a team final, two mm -hmm. gymnasts will receive DNS. Mm -hmm. At the end, there will be a total for the team results, and the team will be in the ranking. Mm. Team final, maybe they will be eight. Mm -hmm. Very interesting, but again, it's uh, logic. Thank you very much. It's logic and more fair because the team is not only one gymnast. There is many other gymnasts put their efforts uh, and uh, years of preparation for this short time limit, like one and a half minutes maximum. So it's logic again and fair. So it's still we consider the team result. Okay, if we move to the other section of the mm. question, if someone got DNF, in all around finals, I'm not sure if she talk about the final uh, result, the summary of um, four apparatus or in certain apparatus. If someone got DNF in all around finals, could she take part in the apparatus finals? This is even more complicated because yeah. uh, we receive uh, many questions about this uh, during Doha or championships. And uh, any question was just a theoretical question, many different uh, situation. Yeah. So um, I have a summary that uh, Celine prepared uh, for us to be more clear mm -hmm. and uh, probably uh, will be um, regarding the technical regulation 4.2 
now I have clear because uh, so many times we discuss these uh, 4.2 sections. <laughs> Became famous numbers. <laughs> yeah, what the gymnast can do and what uh, she cannot do. So to be clear, in all around the finals, yes, the gymnast can receive DNF, which is the total result because she may have DNS in one apparatus. Mm -hmm. This will result in DNF in the all around final, which mm. means she is not completing the competition. All around finals means four apparatus. So if in one she has DNS, she didn't complete the competition. So the final total score is not the addition of the three scores, is DNF, did not finish the competition, okay? Then in that moment, probably she will be injured. Mm -hmm. So there will be a medical report if she didn't finish the competition. Yes, she can go to the apparatus finals. Let's say she didn't do vault because on floor she got injured one foot. So she cannot compete on vault. In this case, she can compete in apparatus finals on bars because anyway, it's only about uh, landing this month. What uh, actually is, it was me requesting is that uh, before going to the apparatus final, I would like to have a certificate from the official doctor that she can go back to compete because the discussion was uh, about my position as president, having a responsibility of the gymnast, all gymnasts competing. And uh, I would like not to have uh, the responsibility of a bigger injury later on because she competed with a serious injury already. So I agree, she can compete to apparatus final, but uh, I would like also to have some proof that she's able to compete, which is possible. Yeah, but that's really logic. I would and, uh, like to cover my position. Yeah, it's logic and important, uh, especially as you mentioned for the safety of the gymnast, first of all. Uh, yeah, because, um, Probably you know, we are, you know very well, actually. We live uh, in a world now with social media that uh, you have to justify any, almost any decision. So maybe the coach pushed the gymnast to compete, even she's not really in a good condition to compete. So I would like not to be involved in the procedure, in the legal procedure later. So I would like to have a proof that uh, the gymnast is able to compete. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's not to protect myself, it's to protect the gymnast, the gymnast as well, as well, mm -hmm. as well mm -hmm. just in case. So to be sure that uh, we are requesting something she's able to do, the person in charge is the doctor mm -hmm. and not the doctor of the team, which is involved in the situation, but the official doctor of the competition, which uh, in FIG is Mr. Sunny, very nice person. Mm -hmm. And uh, actually in Stuttgart, I received one of these uh, requests and uh, he checked the gymnast 
And he said, uh, yes, she's allowed to compete. She's able to do bars. Or I don't remember the apparatus, but he mm -hmm. said, uh, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not a serious injury. She can do it. It's fine. We protect the gymnast. Of course. And uh, we protect also the coach in case. The yeah. Federation, yeah. Everybody. Yeah. But we are true. sure that the gymnast is in a good condition to compete. And we are not requesting too much, which is not healthy for her. Of course, of course. I always try to put it simply in the end because uh, the more it's uh, clear, even though sometimes it's difficult to say black or white, as you said, yeah. in this case, luckily, it's clear. So I hope it's clear for everybody as well. Um, Until the next question. <laughs> yes, always there, there might be a question, always, <laughs> unfortunately. So I guess uh, that's it for uh, today's sessions for the questions and answers. Uh, so far, we received only this kind of questions. And uh, as I said, if not much, it means either everything is clear or they are still working on it. Let's see. Uh, I would like to thank you very much, dear Donna, for your. Um, explanation for your valuable experience to share with us it's a really a big big um, privilege big uh, honor for us to have you with us today and uh, it's a big help i'm sure uh, in any other sessions when we have questions we will refer to you again because we need your experience and uh, before we finish the session of today i would leave the floor for you to please uh, you are uh, welcome to add anything, any explanations or announcement, even regarding the future or any uh, rules. Uh, we would uh, today we would like to get as much benefit as we can from you until the last drop. <laughs> to be honest, so please, uh, you, I leave the floor for you uh, to, to add whatever you prefer. So, dear judges. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think. Uh, Artistic gymnastic, women artistic gymnastic is a beautiful sport. And uh, as judges, we have a, a huge uh, responsibility because uh, we have uh, to reward the gymnast uh, work on the field of play. I would like to ask you to practice a lot privately or using uh, STS, you know, is an FIG tool. You have a free access before going to competition, to any competition, because uh, we are never ready enough. Of course, more you practice, more you have questions. So you can refer to Rima, your president because uh, she is uh, very supportive uh, to you and uh, she has uh, enough knowledge for a short time uh, fig member I try. <laughs> very short time. <laughs> very short. i try i try to do my best to answer but uh, she has uh, knowledge to answer and in case uh, to have additional clarification she is uh, constantly in touch with me with the wtc in a FIG uh, for a complicated situation. And uh, yes, we will help uh, you to increase uh, your level because the goal now is to have uh, enough AGU judges with appropriate level for the competitions you have to run. I'm sorry to tell you that the future will be only English. So, dear ladies, study <laughs> English <laughs> because even in the next uh, judges' uh, courses, there will be no theory exam. The instructions will be always in English. And uh, you need to understand well the instruction. And also, you need to communicate between uh, other, uh, among the judges' community, because uh, speaking with other judging 
judges sharing experience. This will help you to improve again, to have a more and more the code and gymnastics in your hands. I'm sorry, this is the bad news, but it's good. English, even my basic English, is enough. So More you don't enough. require an Oxford uh, <laughs> degree. Exactly. It's yeah. enough to understand and to have the basic for uh, communication. Mm -hmm. You have a one year in front of you. Is a one year full of questions because uh, with this uh, pandemic, we don't know how will be our future. Yeah. So it's the moment you take the opportunity to work for yourself, not under pressure. So it's really the moment to improve. And this is what RIMA is doing for you with these uh, seminars and maybe in the future uh, webinars. Uh, anything you need, ask her. She can organize everything for you. But first so. must come from you. You need the willingness to improve. So go to Rima, put everything on her shoulders, and she has big shoulders. <laughs> she has a, a lot of help from the AGU, from the president. We can say also thank you to Mr. President Al Shatri. I of hope course. the name is correct. Correct. You can say better. Okay. Correct. Because I provided a tool that uh, may help the development yeah. Yeah. Yeah, of gymnastics. So now you have your destiny in your hands. I can only say work for it. And we are ready to support RIMA, the AGU Technical Committee and any judge who wants to improve. Motivation is the first pushing. And we will help judges with motivation. Mm -hmm. Correct, Rima? Of course, we are always motivated by you. We are really lucky. And uh, of course, nobody is perfect. Uh, thank you very much for your uh, speech and encouragement. And that's why I'm encouraged enough. It's. Uh, one of the reasons that we are in this stage uh, studying hard and trying to give correct information to the judges is you uh, personally and your team and also AGU. As you said, I would like to thank our AGU family, especially Mr. President Abdurrahman Al Shatri for his continuous and endless support. And this is a big occasion for the judges, as you mentioned, while sitting at home, they have the seminar uh, reaching to their lap. You just have to sit and purely uh, lesson or evaluate with us. This is really big privilege, big uh, advantage. And uh, when I have not a um, clear answer or uh, hesitate, of course, I will refer to you as always uh, and or to one of your team, which you are always helpful and supportive. And this is really big uh, also privilege and advantage for us, for all the judges. And um, if you would like to add something else before I uh, start my conclusion speech, you are still welcome, dear Donna. All you are doing for us, because you are working for us, for FIGWTC. So thank you very much. I thank you so much. Yes, I thank you also for your new, uh, not new actually, but uh, continuous philosophy to uh, reach out to us all the continental uh, committees and the presidents and to make us feel like we are one team uh, under your umbrella as FIG and we work all together like colleagues, like one team. It really give us push, it give us responsibility, but also give us um, the, like the feeling of one team, one family, which is really good. So this is again your positivity and your uh, encouragement, which I really appreciate. Thank you again because of your continuous support, even for running these seminars. It's uh, our first time in AGU and maybe in the world. Uh, we are just started newly to use this platform due to this difficult time. But as I mentioned in my previous seminars, we try to change the negative points into positive points. Okay, 
there is pandemic, we are at home, let's work while at home. And that's why even me personally or my colleague, we try to improve our skills on internet, on Zoom and uh, many other things. I improved a lot, but I'm sure still we need a lot <laughs> to go. Uh, so far, I think it's okay. And um, we, we try to change from negative to positive uh, points. We try to change the, the conditions that we have, which is really important. Everybody must do it in, in their life generally, not only in gymnastic platform. And we learned some from you regarding this point, especially, I have to admit. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I would like to thank you again and again, really. It was a big honor and privilege for us, a big benefit to have you with us. Thank you for giving us your time. Thank you for your valuable experience to share it with us. And I would like to say again to our judges, in case they couldn't follow us for the, the moment due to other jobs or different in the time between countries, they can find it again recorded in, uh, in our uh, AGU YouTube educational channel. And this is the last um, session for this set of seminars, but hopefully we will meet with them again towards the end of this year uh, into the second set of these uh, seminars. And I will try to make more practice for them because what all what we need, as we mentioned before, it's practice. So the more they watch the videos or uh, evaluate, the better they will get and they will get more used to and more practical, more fast, more accurate. So we, we try to do our best and uh, we will keep referring to you, asking your support as usual. And I'm sure you, are, you will stay generous as always with us, dear Donna. So thank you very much uh, for now. Very happy to have you. And uh, let's hope to meet again soon in another platforms or in another seminars. Okay. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Time. Stay safe. Thank you very much. By my Bye. name, by by the name of my committee, and by the name of AGU and all the judges. Thank you very much. Stay safe. You too. Bye bye. Bye bye.